Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Martoni, and welcome to a corner of my home. We're going to start diving into some of those exercises that we went over in Low Back Pain 101. It is extremely important to understand the fact that you cannot have a healthier back by just having a stronger back. You really got to work on those core stabilization muscles. And the first core stabilization muscle I want to work on is the abdomen, the stomach. Because also, as we mentioned in, in, the, uh, in the lecture, is that your stomach is designed to be engaged, engaged as long as you're awake, 24 hours a day, because it's part of its smooth muscle. And by engaging your stomach, what that does is increases interabdominal pressure, which supports your lower back. So the key to having a healthier back is to have a strong stomach, because you see you know, millions of people walking around with their guts are hanging out. You really want to make sure that you're holding that stomach in as long as you, for as much as you can, as much as you can think about it. So, first thing, when we start doing these exercises, I want you to notice my socks. Highland Mountain socks, I think they're beautiful, thank you very much. No, I'm only kidding. I want you to lie back, and I want you to cross the legs, okay? And when most people think about crunches or doing sit-ups, their feet are down, and they're pulling on the heads, and they're coming up. That's not what I want you to do at all. I just want you to engage the, the stomach. So feet are up, hands are behind the neck, and then I'm coming up like this. Make sure that you're looking up because when you start looking down like that, you're going to start putting pressure on your neck and you'll actually start pulling the lower back. The more arched the spine is like that, the more pressure you put here and here. So you want to come up and then you come up like this and you just do crunches until you have, until your stomach starts to burn. Then you want to come over here to the left side, do crosses for the count of five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, whatever you can do. And then you come to the other side for the count of five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, whatever you can do. Then what you do is, is you go right to the hurdler stretch. Do that crunch, go to the hurdler stretch, come back, touch your toe lean into it. If, you're, if your back is not feeling, if you're feeling a little twingy down there, make sure that you then, then arch your back and then go down at that point like that. Okay? Then we're going to switch sides. Heard the stretch opposite way. We're going to go down. Just get that nice easy stretch on that hamstring. Nice easy stretch. Going to do that. Then we're going to go back down. Crunches again. You know, making sure that I'm looking up and I'm not looking down. Then side to side. And what you're trying to do is you're just trying to do it until your stomach burns. And then you go down into that herd of the stretch. And then you're able, each time you do that lower back exercise, or that, I mean, sorry, that stomach exercise, you're able to get down into a deeper stretch, just like that. So it's important to do stomach, it's important to do hamstrings. Then the other one I was talking about is you bring your legs up, you lie on your back, and you just roll the lower back around, just like that. And what you're trying to do, just trying to get some blood flow into that lower back, that's all. Just gotta keep that thing rolling around. Just like that, and then go back. And then the last exercise is called, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a modified pigeon, I believe. And what it is, is we're gonna be doing our, it's called your piriformis, which is the back part of your glutes. And, and what it looks like, is a lot of times people know to take their leg over and to stretch like this. Well, I want to take that and I want to do it face down to use our body weight to stretch. So let's say I'm going to stretch out my right knee, I mean my right uh, glute or my right piriformis. I'm going to take my left leg and bring it back. I'm going to take my right knee, bring it forward and bring the foot underneath. 
and I'm going to kind of get right down on my knees, I mean right down on my elbows, and I'm going to stretch that out. Now, if I don't feel it here, one thing that we can do is we can always turn, let's say, up to the opposite side. So if I'm doing my right piriformis, I can turn to the left and sit right back into it. And I'm getting a good stretch right on that piriformis. Now, if I want to do the other side, we just reverse it. Left side, left knee forward, right knee back. And I'm going to turn opposite the side I'm stretching, and I'm going to sit right down into it. Just like that. And, and then remember, I gave, you, I gave you one extra one. And that one extra one was, let's say you just get that twinge. It's right when you, you woke up or you, you, you know, it was early in the morning and you, you picked that thing up and you got that twinge right in your lower back. People often ask me, Doc, what can I do you know, to, to help myself right away? And this is what you do. So let's say you just got the twinge two seconds ago. I would lie down on the, ta on the, on the floor and I'd do these crutches. Up and come back. Go up and come back. Go up. I would do that until my stomach is just fatigued and I can't do any more. Then I take my leg, I slowly lean it all the way over, and then massage, and I just pull gently. And then I take my leg, go all the way over, and I pull gently. Nothing happens. So then what I would do is I'll go and I'll do some crunches again. And then I'll come back. I'll lean over and click. I get a little click in my spine. That What that is, is that's the bone actually moving. It's releasing the joint and... You're using rotation, so I don't want you to do that all the time, but what that will do is that will help release the joint in a way where you'll be able to have some more motion and then call the office, get in, and, and we'll reset the other side of the joint. But that is a good thing that you can do right when you start to feel that twinge because what it can do is it really can save you, you know, we days if not weeks of, of needless suffering because it will reset that joint and it'll be a little bit more stable. So you always have to remember though, from the point that you get that tweak, it's four days of no bending forward. Really, really want to be cautious on bending forward. Like doing, doing stretches like this where, where you, know, you pull the feet in and, and you're leaning forward into it. It puts so much stretch, stress on the lower back. You, know, there, you could lean against something and get your groin stretch like this. And as long as I'm leaning back, I could kind of push down on the legs and that's getting a good stretch in here. So I'm opening up the angle and I'm able to get a stretch. I really don't like that leaning forward type of stuff because it really puts that strain down in that lower back. So I want to say thank you for paying attention and thanks for coming to the talk because it really, really means a lot to me for you to get engaged in this information because as you know at Atlantis our major focus is education. So. Stay connected, and thanks again for getting engaged in Low Back Pain 101. And if you like the information, send it out to your friends. Because ultimately, our major goal is to make Massachusetts the healthiest place to live in the country, and I can't do it alone. So thanks again, and enjoy.